Hello and welcome to this edition of Orion Today. I'm Ian Locke, Executive Director here at ONTV, and with me again, Episode 2, Kim Urbanowski. <laughs> so, uh, you're, I am a rookie for this show, so you're the vet. You're going to have to help me <laughs> along uh, during this episode. Gotcha. But in this episode, we're going to talk about a lot of fun stuff. If you didn't see last, uh, or I guess it was two weeks ago, our first episode, yeah. we had, um, you know, local news, just fun stuff. This is a light, airy show, just fun to do. Uh, conversation, we're right. going to have a, a guest on later uh, to talk about great things happening in the village and just share a bunch of stuff that's happening around town. Love it. And uh, it's, it's a lot of fun and I, I appreciate you coming in again today, uh, Kim. Well, thank uh, you I know very we just much. gave you the hook and pulled you yeah. out of what you were doing and said, Please come on the show. It was hard for me to make the decision to come and do this. <laughs> it's difficult. I don't believe you. <laughs> so here we are, Orion Today. This is a fun program. Uh, and the cool thing, Kim, you've been with us for a while. You're on our cable commission. Tell I us am. a little bit about what you've, uh, you're have you doing um, in, in the township. Um, well, I'm mostly of the things that we're doing. Like later today, I have yeah. a PC, a planning commission pre-app meeting. So there's a lot of... Um, building happening and things that are you know coming now that the, the ground is warming up yes. and spring is here the and shovels so, start going in right? yeah hopefully so um you know just business as usual at the township everyone is settling into the building yes getting used to it um things are running smoothly the you know meetings are great yep it's um and the meeting is the me the new uh the new building is mm -hmm. so nice and yes. Um, as a resident of Orion, and I go in to pay my bills and mm -hmm. stuff, I love how it's so open, yeah. and you can just cruise on in down, you know, down the hall, and it's easily navigable. Mm -hmm. You have signage that is easy to read, yes. so it is very well thought out. So kudos to everybody at the township; right. you guys did a great job on yeah. that. Yeah, thank you. Well, yeah. it you know, a lot of people had their hands in that, and a lot of ideas and opinions, and you know, staff was asked questions mm -hmm. about what they wanted and, and all of that, but. Um, it's, I, I'm just really happy for, you know, not only um, township staff, but, you know, now we have a new place for the, the, um, the sheriff's, sheriff's department. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And one of the things that, you know, bothered me the most um, about the old building was that there wasn't anywhere for, you know, our female officers yes. to be. And now that they have a, a nice place, um, you know, a changing room and a, a comfortable place to be, that makes me very happy for them. Yeah, they're not squished in like no. sardines no. and everybody has a spot right. and it's a proper office yes. <laughs> for yes. our sheriff's department. The substation's been here for so long, right? So mm -hmm. it's, it's great to have uh, them have that new space. Well, what are we going to talk about today? So before we get into some of the nitty gritty, we're just looking at the uh, Lake Orin Review. Yeah. And um, this should arrive in everybody's mailbox, right? So the Lake Orin Review arrives uh, every Wednesday. week on a third Wednesday or Thursday, I think yeah. it is. I, I just know that it arrives on my counter right. and I get home and I start reading it. <laughs> so we saw some interesting headlines in the review. Yes. Uh, a new owner will be taking the reins yeah. of the Lake Orin Review from Sherman Publication. So wild. That is wild. I mean, they've been the publisher for so many years, and we have a great relationship with them and the paper and the yeah. staff and um, you know everything they do. It's such a small staff, but they put out such a, a great product that now we go, oh, there's a new owner. So yeah. you know, you know, I one of the things that I do appreciate is is the fact that you know their their reporters, um, their writers like Jim Newell, you oh, know, yeah. he's everywhere and he, he is, is an excellent, you know, they're all wonderful, but um, they really do get to uh, get involved and, and talk to the community. I mean, they're yep. part of the community. So uh, we always had a really good relationship with them um, at the chamber. We did a lot of uh, Chamber of Commerce um, advertising in there yeah. for us. They were so a great we. partner. Yep. So, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm curious to it's, see where it, it goes. It's interesting. The good thing that um, it's still going Yes. You know, because anytime you change hands of ownership, sometimes you wonder, where are we going to go? Right. Is it still going to hang around? Um, you know, and I know over the, the they've did a, a marvelous job of hanging on over the pandemic. Yes. Um, over the last couple of years. And like you said, Jim, our, our relationship with Jim is he's a print version. We're the video version right. of the history of town. Right. So we yeah. we cross paths all the time. So, yeah, we're we're wish, wishing the best for the review and the other local papers that uh, they publish and uh, some other anything else you saw in the paper that was interesting. The, yeah, uh, the 40 under 40. We oh, have yeah, four people fun. from Orion who uh, received the Oakland County 40 under 40. Um, wow. We seem to always kind of I I 
I can't remember the percentage, but Chris was uh, Chris Barnett was yeah. sort of like touting how many of <laughs> of the forty under forty are are from you know here and always yeah. usually are. But um, yeah, who who do we have? Melissa Ford. She is the manager of Pink Creek Trail. Oh, fantastic! Um, Vernon Burden, assistant principal, Lake Rain High School. He's a lovely individual. Yes. Um, and then Kyle Hagen, lieutenant, Orion Township Fire Department. And then we have. Um, Dr. Dahan from oh. Dahan Orthodontics. So. Uh, my son is a patient of Dr. Dahan, and he's he's wonderful. Yeah. The, the whole staff over there is great. I love their new facility when they moved over there from that little place. Yeah. Uh, it's so it's so nice to see, and uh, we've had great experience with. Uh, not a commercial. We don't do commercials no here. No commercials. But <laughs> they are all of them are deserving yeah. of the moniker of 40 under 40. Absolutely. So it's it's fantastic. Um, so we know the weather's getting better outside. Mm, thank God. And <laughs> it, it's I'm I'm glad you're here today because we sit down and chat whenever we we meet up and say like, yeah. how you doing, what's going on. Yeah. And something new, uh, knowing that you were coming in today <laughs> and the weather was getting nice, something sparked a memory from. <laughs> pandemic days <laughs> when we're all locked in at home uh -huh. you had a Facebook post of you put together a raised garden I bed did. right because this is spring we're gonna start uh, planting yeah. again and I have to say I saw your raised garden bed I'm like oh, I have to do that <laughs> so I built like challenge accepted. four of them <laughs> I built four of them and so talk about your green thumb and, and what does gardening do for you I mean for you know and I, well, I like to cook, and I think yes. everybody like who knows me knows that about me. Yes, we do. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, we were lucky to, I ordered a bunch of raised garden beds, you know, before we weren't able to get anything. Oh, and, and yeah, yeah. And went, you know, to the Home Depot there on Lapeer, and I, I drive a, um, a Ford Flex, right? So I was able to put all of this, um, these bags of in dirt in my car, <laughs> but it was just, my car was literally like this on the way home. <laughs> But um, we put them in, and then we did, you know, a lot of um, herbs and and yeah. you know tomatoes and things like that. Um, and I, you know, this year we didn't do very much last year because we were doing a graduation party at oh, my house. Yeah. Um, you so said something about radishes. You had a. I did my radishes. <laughs> nobody wanted to try them. They were beautiful. I thought. See, and I had a bumper crop of <laughs> cucumbers, which I can kill a cucumber plant just by looking at it. <laughs> and we had so many, I started making pickles. Really? You know, like just the refrigerator pickles and oh, stuff. Yeah. And by, I think, the end of July, my son and I were like, I'm sick of pickles. I I'm so sick of pickles. pickles. It's so crazy. I'm sick of pickles. But right. It's uh, talking about your cooking and stuff. We're trying to get you in the studio <laughs> here. I'm working on To it. work on our the ONTV cooking show. Yeah. So all the staff, I don't know if you saw, we all did our you own did. little episode oh, for I our food it. drive. And so we're, we're, we're getting yeah. you in here. Yeah, yeah. Because, I will. you know, things are opening up here at ONTV, right? I mean, exactly. we have a whole volunteer crew today, which is fabulous. Our podcasts are kicking. I see Tracy over there. <laughs> Tracy. Uh, Tracy Woodruff, she is one of our uh, uh, podcast star podcast uh, volunteer <laughs> producers here, and she does a great job. Mm -hmm. And uh, our studio's starting to open up, so we're getting you guys in here. Well, I shouldn't yeah. say starting to open up. But it is open. And so we actually had, hearing from our director, the, the voice on high, uh, Joy <laughs> Tysick, we had the Stardusters big band in the studio mm. for like all day. They recorded their and rehearsed oh, and cool. recorded their whole performance, and it was awesome. Yeah. So, uh, and the re reaction has been fantastic. So here's a little right. video of the Stardusters. They were here, all volunteer crew, uh, the whole community came together to get this show put together. So take a look at the Stardusters.
All right, back here in the studio, Stardusters. What we can say about those guys? They play all over, uh, Steve, and they sound people? amazing. And uh, the talent, yeah, and a lot of those are just local, local guys. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to talk to my director real quick. I can hear you, Joey. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> live TV, right? We're live in the studio here for Orion today for episode number two. We are joined in the studio for this segment uh, by Rosemary Ford from the Village of Lake Orion's uh, Parks and Rec Advisory Council. Did I get it right? Close advisory enough? committee. Committee. Yeah. Oh, jeez. I know they're getting start over. Let's right. no, no, just kidding. <laughs> but we're we're close. We love having guests in to talk uh, one on one in person and say hi and what's happening. So you have amazing news for the village and for our parks. So uh, what do we what are we talking about today? Today we're going to talk about we are having a community build day. We have two major play structures that will be coming into the village. One is at Greens Park. And if you would like, um, I can share that uh, the play structure for Children's Park. Yeah, here. Well, let me show you. I can hold those up to the camera. For Greens, if you would be so kind oh, as to boy. hold that up. We have been wanting a play structure there for some time. All we had was, we have swings, and we had um, a basketball court, mm -hmm. and this slide that was very uncomfortable. <laughs> yes, yeah. let's put it I've that tried way. that slide. <laughs> yeah. So we're like, okay, we need to ditch the slide. And so there was this program through T-Mobile. Molly Lalone of the DDA yes. um, informed us of this grant that T-Mobile had. And so we applied and you had to state why it is you feel you need this. And yeah. our budget in the village is very limited. So we thought, we're going to apply for this grant and see where it takes us. Yeah, all they can do is say no, right? I mean, exactly. So you go, and right. How, how much was the grant, or what were the funds that were the funds potentially could, available? Potential available was fifty thousand. So we thought we're going to go for the whole ball of wax. Because Why not? You'd be amazed, <laughs> and I'm sure some of you know that these play structures nowadays are so expensive. They are. Yeah. So we applied for it. We got it, and we. We're fortunate enough to receive the whole amount. Wow. And the other big news for us, we were really excited, is they only give out so many of these a year throughout the country. We were the only community selected in the state of Michigan to receive this grant, and we got up to $50,000. Through the fabulous. whole state. So, through the whole state, we so were the only So, obviously, one whoever wrote the grant did a nice job. And did you have a hand in that? No, I did not. That credit You're goes to, to Teresa yes. Rutt. <laughs> <laughs> so well, let's we give did, credit where credit's due. So, Teresa Rutt. Very good. And, and she did an amazing job. And so now we have the good fortune that we're going to have a new piece of play yeah. equipment. And we're really excited. And that's just Greens Park. That's just Greens so Park. So that community build day is on Saturday, April 23rd. Here's a graphic. Okay, um, we have a graphic on the screen. You can see uh, Greens Park Playscape community build day, Saturday, yes. April 23rd. Uh, about 9 a.m. Uh, it begins. And is it just. Uh, People will be given assignments to do things, or do yes. you bring your shovel? And or, you know, then how does that work? Then there's going to, well, the DPW is going to provide tools. Well, you got to sign up. We to make sure that you sign up. But there is a sign, sign up, up there, yeah. and um, there's two websites you can go to to sign up and volunteer. Okay. And we'd appreciate any help that we could get. So there that's lakeorion.org or downtownlakeorion.org. You can correct. sign up at those two websites to help out on the 23rd. So yes. what is the process of that? So I volunteer. <laughs> I roll in. How does that work? Well, if you're rolling at 7, <laughs> you have the good fortune of getting coffee and from a bean to go, which donated that, and then bagels from Manny's Deli. Oh. Because we thought we would approach businesses in the community to see yeah. if they would be willing to help us. T-Mobile is going to provide lunch for people. There will be someone from the company that we're purchasing the equipment that will oversee the yeah. build. Yeah. <laughs> because there's, as you know, there's specs that you have to follow and Absolutely. whatnot. So they'll probably organize people into various groups as to what they can do to yeah. make Yeah. Now we've seen other builds, like at Camp Agawam had a build. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, that was a big build day. We act, I mean, and they had an amazing yeah. turnout from what I understand. You were there we for yep. that. Yeah, yeah we did, um, did help get a lot of the volunteers, most of the volunteers, and then, you know, we were cooking and providing the food too, but uh, I think there were 300 people there wow. that day, and it was super rainy at one point, and we all had to, we all had to go into um, Alberici Lodge. So I, I will be crossing my fingers for you on that day that you don't experience 
any bad weather. You We're knocking on wood here. Beautiful right. weather. But you know, we got it done, <laughs> and it's really nice because you know the community then feels even more ownership of it. Oh yeah, yes. because they've had their hands in it, literally in building it. So. And Greens Park is open to everyone. Um, there are season passes, which it is a steal if you ask me, because mm. it opens Memorial Day, closes Labor Day. They have lifeguards. Um, I always say we have real bathrooms because we do, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I say that because. Families that bring children a lot of times, yeah. they do not take to Porta Johns. Yes. Yeah. So this is a nice thing. It's a very pleasant setting on Lake Orion. And if you don't live near a lake, it's great. And if you don't want to buy the season pass for $20, you can come in and it's $2 a person. Wow. Where do they get, where do people They get can get them? it online through the village and they can go to the village hall and buy their park pass. Or there's somebody there, they can buy their passes right then and there when they come into so the So on park. the spot. So you just pull yes. in, you can get your annual mm -hmm. or your daily, whichever you prefer. And the other thing we're excited about is because we have a new, we have new boards on the deck. Oh, so yeah. after all these years, yep, they were getting a little, <laughs> so now we've got new um, composite oh, on nice. our It'll deck. It'll last a lot longer. So it will last right? a lot longer. And that was our aim there. And then in the future, we hope to... Um, have a pavilion there Ooh, okay. because being on the water I think it would be a really nice thing for family reunions sure. graduation perfect. parties you name it fantastic. whatever but in the meantime we're just excited yeah. that we're gonna have a play structure for children yep and that's Greens Park like we, we don't want to forget the funds are going elsewhere too right I mean it's yes. gonna be spread over so another then, park so right can I so grab then this real quick are we gonna talk may. about and children's will, yeah, or two oh there's two it. okay yes all right so nice Children's Park is also getting new play equipment and Children's Park has a ton of usage. The DDA holds a lot of events there. Yeah. Um, I just drove by there this morning on a nice day. There's tons of people and I have I go down there and I talk to these families or grandparents or parents whatnot and yeah. we're not only getting people from the village and from the township we're getting them from Clarkston. Yeah. I met one lady one day she has to come down once a week for something in the village and her boys make her promise yep. that they she takes uh -huh. them to that park. Um, that park has is in Rochester. You'd be surprised. Yeah. That, and you know what they said they like is they like the size of the park. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it's conducive for the age of the children. Absolutely. So we're going to have two structures. One for the older kids. This is going to be more for toddlers. And mm -hmm. this we're benefiting from the DDA. They are purchasing this equipment so that we can have good equipment there. Awesome. The equipment that we have currently is starting to get older and so it's getting cracks. There are some uh, bolts that are popping up. My kids up. played on that and my oldest is a junior at MSU. Right. So, yes. <laughs> so, and it's a, so it's a safety concern and so we went to them and said hey look it you know would you be willing to help us you have a lot of functions there they talked well, about it and they were more than willing to. More detail, some other elements, yeah, right? Yeah, a couple spinners. You got a swing set, oh, a couple is, spinners. Oh, geez, I get I'm not sure about that. Oh, <laughs> yeah, me either. But I was saying the same something, thing. Nope. something little, that children like. Got a little so. nauseous just looking <laughs> yeah. at it. Right. So, yeah, fantastic. Oh, that's neat. And I like that it's group based, right? So you have a spinner in the, the old school danger. Uh, <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Merry-go-rounds well, that are made out of steel and get so hot you could fry an egg on it in the <laughs> summer. We've come a long way yes. um, with the stuff we grew up playing on, right? Yes. So this is outstanding. Um, any other? What's the pavilion here? I think no, that, this that was is, kind of this a this is a future project. Future so that's project. why I okay. just set that aside. Well, but, it's um, it's always good to look to the future, and it, and when T-Mobile uh, donated that check, uh, Owen TV cameras were there. Yes. And got interviews like we always are. You know, I'll, that's that's big news in the community. So we're there. It was on our newscast, and even Channel Four called and said we couldn't make it in time. So can we have your footage? Oh, and we're really? like, absolutely. Nice. So yeah, I, people don't know that we share our footage with our local media outlets down in the Detroit area. So. We have good uh, partnerships with them to get that information out good. so everybody knows. That's but wonderful. But we, yeah. are, we are really excited because we've waited a long time for this, and now we're seeing these things come to fruition. Yeah. It's a reality, and it's going to be a plus and a boon because hopefully then right. even more people will come and enjoy what we have. I think with the downtown now and all the restaurants and goings on, yes. it's really interesting because I happen to live in the village, so when I walk by, um, you see families that go there before dinner, they'll come there after dinner, um, you know, they have the community concerts there and that yep. whatnot, and 
Halloween and all those kinds of things. I mean, Halloween, I was there. Were you there? It, yes, you were. We, On TV was We there. were there. We're always there and have been for a long time. And yes. it was, we were kind of concerned because we didn't have the parade. We're so used to having the parade and right. that sort of thing, but we know how things change. Yeah. But uh, when we saw the footage and the, the, the turnout and... I mean, kids are going to have fun no matter what. It's Halloween. How could you not have fun, right? <laughs> right. And so the turnout was fantastic. The setting is great. The park, since it's major overhaul with the tiered seating, and yes. it's right there on the, the, the water there. You know, you have the water and the ducks. and It's such a really relaxing space, but to have it filled with kids laughing and screaming and having a good time is <laughs> always a blast. That's the whole point. So, it's yeah. It's fun to watch them. Yeah, so um, are there any other elements that you would like to talk about of uh, the parks uh, group that you're with down there or well, anything else we don't know or you want to? Well, we also have something, secrets? but it's in waiting because okay. of um, we have it. I, we have to, we're going to have a new bridge at uh, Washington Street, uh -huh. and that is because um, the other thing is, and the township has worked with us on this, is. Um, we have to have bank stabilization for Paint Creek. Mm. That's oh. very important. And so um, in order to get it, I say you have to play the game. So we have this really, <laughs> it's close to my heart, this really cool old rusty bridge down there. So if you go through Meeks Park and walk all the way to the end, so you go to the, east, go to the end, yes. it's, it ends up in Washington Street. I think it has character. The state says it's not, um, Worthy. <laughs> well, um, I mean, stable. Uh, it's and not adaptable. It's uh, what, oh, ADA. It's yes. not ADA. Oh, oh yes. So um, we had the good fortune that the village did some work and research, and come to find out, Independence Township was getting rid of two of their bridges. Oh. So we in turn purchased them because they're ideal for us. They will be the right size. So one will eventually go there. So that will bring that up to code, code that the state good. deems necessary. Yeah. And then our hope is is to end up getting the money or means to, there is a bridge, as you know, at Children's Park that you go from the parking lot into the yes. park and it would replace it so they would both oh, be okay. looking the same. Oh, nice. Very cool. Yes. I, oh, wow. you know, I didn't realize there was a marketplace for bridges. No, I didn't, I didn't know that <laughs> either. I, I thought it was Where interesting. do you find a bridge? Well, it's kind of... check presentation over video. Oh. Oh. Oh, we do. Hey, uh, thank you, Joey, our director. Okay, we have some video of the actual check presentation. Uh, if we can roll that up, uh, that'd be great. Um, and this was again, I'm trying to remember September, right? I think it was later than, later I than thought that it was later I than see, September. I see jackets was, in. Yes, it was cold. <laughs> so yeah, I'm thinking it was like the end of October. Uh, Ken Van Portfleet. Ken Van Portfleet, who's yeah. Village Council President, and then Joe Young, who's the Village Manager. Yep. These are lovely gals from, there is the yes. treacherous, <laughs> hurtful. The frog um, slide. Is it a frog, frog? slide? Yeah. It was It was just, I think it, the, the plastic was so hard. Yeah. Um, but you'll see Teresa on the left who what wrote the grant. What a presentation. Wow. Yes. T-Mobile really went all out for They uh, did. It's they, a big deal. They went big time. So. They like um, you won. And they were, great. They were a great bunch of mostly gals. A couple, look at Teresa there. <laughs> so that's kind of fun. Um, and fifty thousand dollars, and the only grant awarded in the whole state, state of Michigan. Yes, that is so. Wonderful. That was quite an accomplishment. I'm sure, it is. Um, yeah, and this is. Uh, yeah, and you can see, and the the great thing too is you see when these sorts of events happen in town, a, a nice. There's a lot of people that come out for them. Yes. Right, mm -hmm. they're yeah. they're there to support it. It happens, and mm -hmm. uh, we have that on video for future generations to take a peek. I go, well, how did this happen? And you can actually use that for other grant applications, saying, see oh, how the, it, involved the community is and with these sorts of things and enthusiastic oh, about it. Again. So, but yeah, so, um, okay, so yes, this is a live show and we're kind of moving <laughs> around and doing lots of things, but let's promote again the community playground build. We don't want to forget, uh, make sure you sign up for that. It's at Greens Park uh, for the Greens Saturday, Park April Place. April 23rd. Gate. Yep. And then if people would be so kind, we're going to have another community build. What? <laughs> no, we're just putting everybody to work. I know that's great. Oh, and but I see it here on the sheet. Uh, yes, May fourth, seven thirty a.m. for Children's for Park. For Children's Park, because okay. we will need volunteers again that day. So okay, um, and we we can uh, yeah we can put uh, there it is Children's Park Playscape coming up 
on May 14th. I didn't even know we had that graphic. So way to yeah. go, Joey. Thank you. <laughs> uh, the build will begin, like you said, at 9 a.m. Um, but again, if you get there early, come get some coffee and some tasty bagels. <laughs> there you go. Right, and so. and work with your your fellow uh, residents and, and build stuff. So all that good stuff. So. Uh, Rosemary Ford, thank you so much for coming in. I appreciate it. You are welcome. Great information. It was a pleasure. Thank you for having us so that we can um, show you what's to come yeah. in the village. Yeah, it's great. And there's so much happening in the village. Yeah. So this is just, t you know, touching just the tip of the uh, iceberg, That's as right. you say. So, we're just um, getting started. Yeah, we're just getting started. So thank you. Um, we do have a, another video to show you. So uh, March was reading month. Uh, around the schools and around Michigan. I think it's kind of the nation, really. Yeah. And uh, we do have a video of uh, Inside the Dragon, which is uh, a program that we help produce with the Lake Orion Schools. And we have some footage about March's Reading Month. So take it away, Joey. When the calendar flips to March, there is a ripple across the Lake Orion Community Schools. Months of planning for March's Reading Month are unleashed, and creativity bursts forth throughout the district. An array of guest readers, incentive opportunities, competitions, and motivation to crack open a book fill the schools. Carpenter is doing a Reading Olympics theme this year for March's Reading Month, and we have a school-wide goal of 150,000 minutes. We have our dragon reading racer here, and he's going to race over our Minute Mountain. Um, and when he hits the bronze, that'll be 50,000 minutes. The silver is 100,000 minutes. And hopefully we make it to the gold finish line, which is 150,000 minutes. So the students have a, a weekly organizer page that they keep track of their um, minutes on, and then they turn that into their teacher every Friday, and the teachers are tallying those up. Um, and we have a teacher who's in charge of uh, calculating the school-wide minutes and moving our dragon. And then each grade level has an individual reading goal for a certain number of minutes every week. If students meet that goal, they have a little snowflake they can put their name on and come and add it to inside the mountain here. So we'll be building some more snow throughout the mountain over the month. At the elementary schools, finding a theme is important to engage the students. At Stadium Drive, the theme was space. The different planets and photos of students in small spaceships. They even had dress up day, where Stadium Drive students dressed in their best astronaut gear. At Blanche Sims, the school signage and decorations centered around Candyland, always an enticing option for students. The Sims students also received an opportunity for their first larger gatherings in the past few years to connect with author Jonathan Rand. He is the author of Freddy for Nortner, which I know you all know, and the Dollar Store Danny series, as well as a bunch of other books. So please welcome Jonathan Rand. And the funny part about this is that years from now, when you guys have the opportunity to attend college, I promise you, you will remember this day. You are going to remember me being at your school talking to you about this. Now, it might be different. Years from now, you're going to be away in college. You'll be in your dorm room, sitting on a little milk crate, eating macaroni and cheese from a paper plate. And you're going to remember this day, and you're going to stop eating, and you're going to think, <gasps> this is what that author guy was talking about. To show that reading is not just for young students, the LCS elementary classes each brought in a few guest readers to share books. LOCS superintendent Ben Kirby read in a number of schools and got to connect with students. I'm a bad seed, a real bad seed.
Oh yeah, it's true. The other the other seeds, they look at me and they say, that seed is so bad. When they think I'm not listening, they mumble. There goes that bad seed. There was the little bowl of milk just waiting. <laughs> it's just his eyes. It's the milk. So she chased it down the sidewalk, through the garden, past the field, and by the pond. But Kitten never seemed to get closer. The month is an opportunity for dragons throughout the community to connect with the students, and many took up the opportunity. Both Oakland County Sheriff's deputies and LLCS Board of Education trustees visited Pine Tree Center to read to classes. Keep the cat with walking down the street in his brand new white shoes. He loved his white shoes so much, he sang this song. I love my white shoes. I love my white shoes. I love my white shoes. At the middle school level, the annual Battle of the Books excites many of the students. They are split into teams within their schools in January and spend the next two months reading the assigned books and familiarizing themselves with the texts. Then, in March, they all gather for a one-day competition where they answer trivia questions about the books and celebrate with costumes. We are super excited this year just because we got to do it back in person. We were virtual last year, so we spent the last uh, five months or so reading and getting ready and writing questions and preparing these teams for battle. So this event is probably my favorite event of the, my whole uh, career, <laughs> basically. And um, we just want to foster that love of reading. So by adding a competition to it, it kind of makes it really, really fun and they just have fun along the way and they're learning the reading, they're picking up new words, new vocabulary and um, keeping their brains smart. Uh, witnessing a lot of energy, uh, it's, it's great to see all the kids out here, um, working as teams, I see a lot of great costumes, a lot of, a lot of good energy, so it's a lot of fun so far. March is reading month and that's really what it's about, it gets kids involved in reading, enjoy, you know, instills that love of reading uh, and hopefully that carries them through. So I think I see a lot of enthusiastic kids about reading here, and that's, that's really what it's about, right? The middle schools also allowed students to visit the media center on their lunch breaks to hear guest readers, including Sabrina Halsey from the Orion Township Public Library. Throughout the district, March is dominated by readers, authors, and creative movement associated with reading. While reading is highlighted within one month, the hope is the passion continues throughout the year. All right, back in the studio. Great uh, little piece put together for the uh, Inside the Dragons. That show has been, I think, four years running now on the Ed Channel. It's Comcast uh, Channel 22. And on our video on demand at orientontv.org, you can watch uh, Inside the Dragons, see what's happening in and around the school district uh, every month. And uh, we work with Mark Snyder, their communications yeah. uh, director over there. So great partnership with ONTV and the schools. But March is reading month. Uh, you reading any books, Kim? So the funny thing is, um, I it has been a while since I picked up any sort of book that I wanted to read. Yeah. It's always something I have to read. Yes. <laughs> I'm forced to read. Uh, so I decided that one of my goals for 2022, is that where we're at now? Uh, yeah, 22. 2022. Wow. Was to read 12 books, one per month. Okay. So um, January and February, I didn't read anything. So in March, I read two. <laughs> Uh, and and I, I got through both of them in one day a piece, and wow. so I've started a third one. Um, so so hopefully. you're keeping to your, and we I'm were, we were before while that piece was running, we were chatting a little bit, and I'm embarrassed to say, <laughs> um, I have one book about that big, <laughs> and Evelyn Doyle, a good volunteer mm -hmm. here, or a good friend of ours, she recommended it, uh, and. I started reading it going, okay, this is interesting. It's this big. And I haven't read in a while. Like you mm -hmm. said, I have to read everything that I have to read. It's not pleasure. Right. Pleasure reading. And it's embarrassing how long it's taken me to get through this book. D d distractions or whatnot. Right. But it's, uh, I definitely need to get back into the reading. Because we were saying, you know, 
creativity is yeah. one side of the brain, and analytics another side of the brain, yeah. but reading kind of get you both sides you know uh, you know I like to to read books and then y because you can figure out in your own brain you know what does this person look like and y you know you can give your own uh, you know opinion yeah. about what they might look like or be like uh, from the book so I kind of yeah. like that yeah you so know, do I and it, it helps stimulate other creative aspects sure. beyond right it yeah. kind of gets that little fire going of creativity yeah so yeah pick up a book uh, I know March's reading month is over because we're right. in April but it, you can head on down to the library just down the road from the Orange Center, or and we can do that. Go to the Greens Park and read a book there. Greens Park, yeah, the, <gasps> the little, uh, the mobile, uh, the little uh, mini oh, the libraries. Yes, those are, are great. fantastic. We have one, and it's spring, so get out there. Speaking of spring, <laughs> what's coming up in April? We have Easter holiday mm, coming this up, weekend. and uh, on TV cameras, we're out uh, covering the event called Bunny Bop here in the township. It's always a great uh, time for the kids running around getting eggs and all that good oh. stuff. So here's a little feature put together uh, by the Owen TV staff about Bunny Bop. On Saturday, April 9th, 150 kids along with their family members gathered at the Orient Center for the annual Bunny Bop. This event is put on by the Orient Township's Parks and Recreation Department. The day was divided into three different sessions to accommodate the popularity of the event. We have the Easter Bunny behind me. We have the 4-H uh, group that brought wild bunnies, so they're here as well. Uh, we have snacks and, of course, the egg hunt. A little chilly weather didn't stop the kids from taking part in the egg hunt. Hundreds of candy-filled eggs were spread out in the grass behind the Orient Center. Well, I like to make sure that everybody gets uh, an opportunity to hunt for eggs, so we do divide it down. We have um, ones and twos in one group, threes and fours in another group, and then the five and olders because they get a little bit more excited than the younger kids, so they're on their own. Well, the DJ is new this year. We um, tacked on to the end of our event a special needs egg hunt, so um, along with that came in the DJ, so that is new this year. A special thank you goes out to the middle school You Before Me group. The group was also in attendance volunteering their time helping with sign-in, passing out of snacks, and cleaning up after the event. From the Orient Center, this is Rebecca Andrus reporting for ON TV News. Always a great event is Bunny Bop. Uh, been doing, I've been covering it over the years. ONE TV's been doing it since they've had it, right. um, and all the different versions of the Easter egg <laughs> grab. Those kids were raring to go. Yeah, they were. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame them. them I like, mean, some of them look like professionals out there. Right. <laughs> well, I mean, I think the key is you tell them, don't start here. Like, run to the back. Yeah. Run to the back. Because everybody work your way this yeah, way. That's right. So strategy, going Just to get those it. eggs. You got to make sure that you plot it out. You you sound like you've done this before. I. I mean, you know, I have a lot of kids, so I mean, I, you know, we have to strategize and make sure they... That's so funny. But yeah, it's spring. Get out. Have fun. The Easter holiday's coming. It's, mm. um, I'm, I'm, I love the Easter season, um, meeting up with family, getting yes. together. I get to have, uh, going over to my in-laws over the Sunday. Do you have any Easter plans? Um, just, just us, our family. family. Yeah. You know, we'll have our, our meal on Easter Sunday and yeah. relax, actually, because this will be the first weekend that we've had nothing to do. Yes. So... So it's good to sometimes do nothing at all. Correct. Right? <laughs> yes. That's why I, I picked up the book and I tried to read it because I had nothing to do. <laughs> no, I'll finish a book this weekend. <laughs> but, yeah, it's, uh, well, we got to have you back and give us a review of that book. But oh. um, uh, are we ready to move on? I think so. Let's say uh, Scouting on Air. Let's talk about, so Owen TV is always drawing in new shows and new things. And since, uh, you know, the restrictions have been, we've been very lucky, very mm -hmm. fortunate here in Lake Orion and, um, in Michigan with the COVID situation, I hate to say the C word, yeah. but we're kind of getting back to normal and uh, we're always looking for community groups to come in and we were so happy to have the scouts in and they're producing their own show now. That's awesome. All by themselves. So it's like the ON TV staff will come and turn the gear on for them, but they're writing it, anchor, hosting it and doing all these great things. And we had them in, I think they're on their third episode. I think that's which, uh, what they're editing, third episode. Thank you, Joey. And they had a wonderful interview with a scout um, in Poland whose oh. family is uh, taking in Ukrainian refugees. Wow. And so th th 
here at Owen TV, they were able to connect with that family nice. over in Poland and talk to the Ukrainian family about their situation and what's going on and that sort of thing. And a little neighborhood show or a scout right. show turned into something so much bigger. Kind of gives me a little goosebumps. I know. You know I was just thinking Paramount. the same thing. It's, it's uh, uh, you know, that we're able to connect with people halfway across the globe like that for something that's so important. And it's a great lesson for these kids, too. A great lesson in empathy and, and, and helping other people out. Absolutely. And uh, here's a little uh, uh, sneak peek of um, scouting on air. And uh, like I said, they're on episode three, so take it away. This month, I sat down with Mr. Jesse Medlin. Though he now lives in California, Mr. Medlin worked as a counselor right here at Camp Aguam in Lake Orion, Michigan, from 1965 to 1966 when he was a teenager. Aguam remains a go-to destination for the scouts across Southeast Michigan to this day. I was the, uh, the instructor for handicrafts. So the folks who were pursuing the basketry or the leather work or the wood carving merit badges worked with me. I, I was a camper at Agawam prior to being a counselor. I think it was uh, probably 63 and 64. Um, I went to the Jamboree in 1964, and that happened to coincide with the time that our troop would be at Agawam. So I was there, I guess, uh, satellited on a different troop. What was your favorite memory of working at Camp Angolan? Hmm. Probably the, uh, the opening ceremony campfire. Uh, it was a big campfire in the middle and it was mysteriously lit by either a flaming arrow riding down a wire to it or uh, potassium permanganate dumped into glycerin. We just burst into flames and no one was there to do it, so. Mr. Medlin mentioned that at one point on staff, he shared a tent with a scout who would go on to be quite famous. He wasn't one of the instructors. He worked in the, uh, the kitchen. He was also a radio amateur and I, he had his uh, radio gear there and I, I remember WA8 RYV, WA8 Roger Young Victor, and he would be calling out to different places to try to talk with people around the world as a radio amateur. Um, a couple of years ago, I looked on the internet and said, geez, I wonder what happened to these folks. And I did a search on WA8, WA8 RYV because that call sign had been hammered into my head after hearing it so many times over the summer. And it came up that uh, WA8RYV is Larry Bacow, who, unless I'm mistaken, is the president of Harvard University right now. While Dr. Larry Bacow currently serves as president at Harvard, he previously held the office of chancellor at MIT. Bacow grew up as a scout in Pontiac, Michigan, and he has been recognized with the Distinguished Eagle Scout Award. Would you say scouting is different now than it was when you were a youth? Absolutely, it is. Um, there have been, I'm sure, many, many new merit badges added as uh, different topics come into existence. I'm sure there are many associated with internet and computers and software that uh, just didn't exist. When I was there, there was one for uh, farm equipment maintenance. I don't know if they still have that. I don't think Times so. Times change. Uh, by curiosity, are you an Eagle Scout? Yes. What was your What was your Eagle Scout project? We did a lot of uh, 
landscape cleanup at one of the churches. Um, uh, let's see, you wouldn't know where it is. One of the churches at Sashabar Road and Seymour Lake Road. We're happy to inform Mr. Medlin that Seymour Lake United Methodist Church, the beneficiary of his Eagle Project, is currently the chartering partner of his old unit, 135. Wow, that's marvelous. Yeah, that's where we went to church. On behalf of all of us at Scouting on Air, thank you, Mr. Medlin, for your time and support of the Scouting Movement. Right, great guys on Scouting on Air, fantastic show, um, and you know, what can you say? The kids doing good in the community. Scouts, what? Right. Of course. Yeah, of course they are. Right. I mean, you know. Yeah, and we have. Uh, they're always doing something, right? And we mentioned uh, uh, before we went to that video that uh, one of the, the most recent episode, they actually had an interview with a scout in Poland, interviewed. Yeah. Uh, the family from Ukraine, and it was really, really hits home of what's happening around the world. It's it yes, it might be on the other side of the planet, but it still can hit home. And uh, you know, to to just jump on that, the uh, Scout uh, Boy Scouts of America, Michigan Cro Crossroads Council Scout Troop 189 is going to have a pancake breakfast uh, for uh, to support the refugees from Ukraine Saturday, April 16th. Uh, from 8 to 11 a.m. Oh, we have a graphic on the screen. Great. Yeah. Thank you, Joey. Clarkston, at the Clarkston United Methodist Church at 6600 Walden Road in the village of Clarkston. $10 for adults, $5 for kids. Uh, under three are free. Uh, you can bring cash or check, or you can donate more than 10 bucks. You can right. donate more than $5. But <laughs> those are always great fundraisers and the scouts know how to make mean pancakes right well they you know <laughs> they've got experience from camping and then waking up early and they have to they have to make their breakfast and yeah you know I my stepson is is in the other troop and you know he always comes home with probably like maybe a little bit of orange juice left in the gallon because they haven't you know had it all but you know they always do that they always cook together and, yeah. and so and there, yeah, so great, great, great event. Get out there on the 16th, April 16th. Uh, support uh, your scouts. Support the uh, the refugees from Ukraine. Yeah. And uh, you know, uh, these kids go through a lot to put things together to help others. And you can't, uh, I can't say enough positive things about the scout scouts and, and what they do. So right. yeah, if you're interested in the program uh, Scouting on Air, it's airing currently on ON TV. If you have Comcast, you can see it on. Public Access Channel 10. You can also see it on our video on demand at our website at orionontv.org. And uh, yeah, click on the On Demand tab on our website and it'll take you right to the list of programs we have running. Uh, again, orionontv.org. If you're more interested in, hey, how can I take part in a show like this? You can call us at 248-393-1060 and uh, learn more how you can you know, be a part of ON TV and uh, make some shows, or do you have something to say, or if you have something to Let's cook, cook. <laughs> you can do that. Classes. We also have classes, right? So the first step to be mm -hmm. part of ON TV is you take a class. It's a 10 week course taught by ON TV staff, and it's a lot of fun. It's hands on, it's uh, activity based, it is interaction with uh, other residents, and you ha we do a lot of laughing in class. Joe Johnson, our studio <laughs> manager, teaches a class, and you can't laugh. It, it, Joe makes it, it fun, right? right? It's $55 per person, and um, after you take the class, you are considered an ON TV volunteer, and you can use the studio and all of our field equipment for free. I know. It that, doesn't cost anything. That's How crazy amazing is that? to me. That, well, it's amazing to me. I mean, it's, I can't believe that there aren't more people that just aren't breaking down your doors to do that, <laughs> to be honest with you, because, and, and I think Joe and I kind of talked about it a little, time, a little bit um, last time, yeah. that the classes are comparable to something that you would get from like Specs Howard or like a specialty school and um, which you know is interesting because well that's what I wanted to do a long time ago I wanted to yeah. go to Specs Howard but um, so I'm, I'm sending my daughter here for the video class yes. and she's gonna do that and, and wants to take advantage of it but what an amazing thing for the community to be able to do yep. to check those you yeah, know and that equipment out it, it, yeah and it, getting back to the level instruction it is just like a basic 
introductory course that anyone that would uh, having you know college at the beginning level or at Specs Howard, um, it is stripped down so we don't make it too technical. Right. And we just make it fun. Uh, Steve, our camera guy, camera one, my camera guy right there, uh, he went through classes. Uh, Howard class, you have a good time? Thumbs up? Yeah, two thumbs up. Wow. So he had a good time. But it's but this is what it is, right? It's like there's different ways you can serve your community, mm -hmm. right? Uh, this, we have the Scouts. We have Rosemary Ford, yes. right, on the, the commissions. And the boards, you're on our cable commission on the township board, right? And all these different things. So yeah. you can do, you can help your community that way, or you can come in and help us communicate information yes. uh, to the community. It's just uh, there's so many different ways in Lake Orion. It's unbelievable what you can do here I in know. this town. It's, it's kind of crazy. If you're interested in doing other activities, we have a little video file we've been producing for a number of years called Quick Hits. So uh, let's see what's happening this week and this weekend uh, here in the Orion area. Here's Quick Hits. On Wednesday evening, the Oakland County Parks will be hosting a virtual fireside chat, Once There Was a Town Here. Hear stories about three towns that once existed near the parks. The program begins at 7 o'clock. The online Zoom link is available at the Oakland County Parks and Recreation Facebook page. On Thursday, the Orion Library will have Take and Make, Create with Your Crew packets available for pickup. Work together with your family or friends to create a beautiful birch tree painting. All supplies will be available on a first-come, first-served basis starting at 9.30 in the library's lobby. On Saturday, the Scouts of Troop 189 will be hosting a pancake breakfast to support the Ukraine refugees. The breakfast will take place at Clarkston United Methodist Church from 8 to 11 a.m. The cost is $10 for adults, $5 for kids, and children under 3 eat for free. Cash or check only, please. On Tuesday, April 19th, the Orion Library will be hosting Teen Tuesday from 6.30 to 8 p.m. This night is a casual hangout for teens who enjoy comics, video games, board games, crafts, and more. Snacks will be provided and new faces are always welcome. Well, let's take a look at this week's weather. Tomorrow's forecast is calling for rain showers with a high of 68 and low 48. Partly cloudy on Thursday with a high of 54 and low 40. Partly cloudy and windy on Friday with a high of 53 and low of 35. Partly cloudy skies again on Saturday with a high of 41 and a low of 30. And mostly sunny for our Easter Sunday with a high of 47 and a low of 33. Well, that's it for this week's ON TV Quick Hit. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. All right, if that weather forecast isn't spring in Michigan, I don't know what is. <laughs> 68 degrees and then 40? It's confused. 40? I know. Oy. And it's midway through April. I mean, this is... I'm complaining. I shouldn't complain. You know, I remember a couple years ago. No, it was more than a couple years ago. It's over a decade ago. But I bought some hydrangeas to yes. plant around my deck. And it was... Did they make the week, it? But, well, it, they did. <laughs> but you know how you're supposed to wait for Memorial Day yeah, weekend yeah, yeah. or whatever? I did it the week before. Mm. And I was like, Th I should be fine. <laughs> no. I don't know if you remember. Tons of... Just tons. Y yes. Yeah. And they were like this. And you don't know where it's going to land. I mean, it can, we get six inches tomorrow. Yeah. So we got about 60 seconds left uh, before this episode of Orient Today wraps <laughs> up. So I'm going to thank Kim right now. Thank you, Kim. It's always great to have you in. Always a blast uh, of catching up and um, you yeah. sitting in and hosting with us. It's always fun. Uh, just a reminder, Lake Orient sports are underway. Dragon sports are taking place. we got a track meet tomorrow against Clarkston. Get Big em. rivalry meet. Uh, it's supposed to be wet. We just saw that, 68 and rainy all day. I'll be out there with an umbrella and a video camera. And then we have uh, a lacrosse match just took place, uh, Dragons versus Hazlitt, and unfortunately they dropped that one to Hazlitt. Uh, but there's uh, get out there and support those athletes. If you have nothing to do, hop on out to uh, Lake Orion High School and uh, catch a game. Uh, support those student athletes. Yes. And uh, They have concession stands now open, so go grab a dog, all that good stuff. So I'm Ian Luck. Kim Aronowski, thanks for joining uh, this edition of Orient Today. We'll see you next time.